Let's talk about some of the major macro and micronutrients in the plant. So the human uh, organisms have requirement for macro and micronutrients but similar goes for plants. And when it comes to plants, what are the nutrients that are required is really interesting. So if we look onto the soil structure, we have various uh, elements that are found. Now what we would do is we would separate out the macro and the micronutrients. Now let's understand some of these major nutrients one by one. So let's first talk about nitrogen. Now nitrogen as we know is very very important. Plant require this in large amount but direct nitrogen cannot be used and therefore fixation of nitrogen is required. Also we have division of cell where role of nitrogen becomes very very important and it is one of the major constituents of proteins, vitamins and hormones. So that was about one of the major macronutrient which is nitrogen. The next Next major macronutrient that we would talk about is phosphorus. Now phosphorus is the constituent of the cell membranes. Also it is found in the proteins and the nucleic acids. So proteins, nucleic acid and cell membrane are the regions where you have the constant use of phosphorus that is seen. Coming on to next important is potassium. Now in potassium we see that the growth of the plant is mainly governed by potassium. It is also responsible for the opening and the closing of the stomata. So all the process of respiration where you have the opening and the closing of the stomata that is required for exchange of gases would require potassium. Also, it is required for activation of enzymes and maintaining the turgidity of the cell. So maintaining turgidity uh, opening and closing of stomata and then growth. So these are the three important things that we remember for potassium. The next is calcium. Calcium as we require for strong bones. Similarly plants require it for cell growth. So cell growth and cell division basically. So cell growth would occur once the cell division takes place. So calcium is important for cell division and also the functioning of the cell membrane similar to phosphorus. So functioning of cell membrane and cell division is one of the common reasons for where you have calcium that is required. Coming on next is magnesium. Uh, similar to potassium which is required for activation of enzymes, magnesium is also required for activation of enzymes. Now besides activation of enzyme, magnesium is essential for synthesis of DNA, synthesis of RNA. All of this the synthesis process requires magnesium. Magnesium is also required for the formation of ribosomes and the structure of ribosome. So ribosome are the sites for protein synthesis and for that we have magnesium that is required. The next important constituent that we would talk about is sulfur. Now sulfur is an important uh, constituent we would say in amino acids. Uh, that is again for the formation of proteins. Then we also have sulfur important for coenzymes and for vitamins. So all this requires sulfur as one of the major constituents. Now moving from the macronutrients, there are trace amounts that are required. So just to bring the terms again, macro means the nutrients which are required in larger quantity. Micro means nutrients which are required in smaller quantity. Now one of the important micronutrient is iron. Iron is important because it helps in the activation of enzymes along with potassium and magnesium. So potassium and magnesium required in major amounts, iron required in trace amounts to activate the enzymes and help in uh, the protein building. So protein building is again important constituent for iron. The next is manganese. Manganese is required for the process of photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is the process through which oxygen is released uh, along with photosynthesis also for the process of respiration we have the role of manganese that is important and it also helps in splitting of water in the process of photosynthesis. So how water breaks in the process of photosynthesis is attributed to manganese. Then the next important uh, thing that we understand is zinc and along with zinc copper. So let's take zinc and copper together. 
Now zinc and copper have been very very important similar to iron for enzyme activation. So enzyme activation is one of the major functions for the zinc and the copper. Similar for that we also have utilization of calcium. So once the calcium is there in the body it can be utilized once there is zinc and copper that is present. So presence of zinc and copper is important. Molybdenum is important because it is a major component of an enzyme which is no, known as nitrogenase. For the enzyme nitrogenase, molybdenum has an essential role. And finally, chlorine. Chlorine has an important role because it has the way for soluble concent concentration and for this soluble concentration along with the anion cation balance the role of chlorine becomes very very important so those are some of the macro and micronutrients we would be covering many many important topics in plant physiology as well stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead